Hospitals are a scary place. There are sick and injured people, sometimes people pass away, and sometimes ghosts haunt their very corridors and rooms. Join me to hear these true hospital ghost stories. And if you'd like to share your own hospital ghost stories, please contact us. Our email is in the description. It walks the corridors. Sometimes ghosts can be interactive and see you as you see them, and they do things like talk, move away, or look at you. Other times they appear to be nothing but a recording, like an old movie that plays over and over. They look the same way, they do the same thing, and all the while they seem to not notice the person that sees them. Just because they're not interactive, however, doesn't make them any less frightening. This is the case here where I was told by several of the former staff of an old hospital about this particular apparition. On this occasion it was Oliver who had once worked there that told me his story. He had witnessed this on at least two occasions and didn't know what to think. But he wasn't alone. Sometimes several staff would see it at once. As a result, the staff did not like to walk a particular corridor at night and did it only out of necessity. Also. If they had to walk this corridor, they went in groups because they were afraid. Oliver claimed that he knew of the rumours in regards to this corridor, but he'd never seen anything himself and wasn't too fussed about going that way. He admitted it was kind of eerie just because it was so quiet, but nothing had ever happened to him. That was until one particular night where he was followed by something from one end of the corridor to the other. That something was the image of a man. It had a pale and expressionless face, and carried a scalpel in his hand, which he kept by his side. This night, when Oliver actually saw it, he was understandably terrified and ran away from it. He panicked as he expected he would be chased. He dared look back at the apparition to make sure he wasn't just imagining it. But there it was, at the other end of the corridor, coming towards him. It wasn't running after him though, it just walked at the same slow, eerie pace towards Oliver. Oliver bolted out of the area, not looking back. When he arrived back to his colleagues, they saw him in a panic and he told them what had happened. They explained that a few people had seen this apparition and that they believed it was the ghost of a former doctor that had taken his own life at the hospital. And although there were never any claims that it had actually hurt anyone, it was frightening as hell to have that follow you. Buzzers Faye was a nurse of 10 years experience and had seen it all. She recounted to me this story about a particular night shift she was working on. She was working as usual and there was nothing out of the ordinary except for the fact that one of the patients kept on pressing the button for the nurse's assistance. Each time staff would attend, the patient in the bed would say that there was a boy in his room. The nurses would look around and couldn't see anyone else, and they asked him general questions but they didn't think anything more of it. They left the boy alone and went back to work, and soon enough, the boy pressed the button yet again. Again he insisted that a boy was annoying him in his room. Not fully understanding what was going on, the staff made sure the patient was well, they checked his temperature and hydration, and made sure that no one else was in the room. The corridor that led to the rooms was in a position visible to the nurses, and they hadn't seen any patients moving about. They stayed with the boy for a while, and there were no complaints, but when they left the boy alone again for any period of time, Surely enough, the buzzer for assistance would be pressed again. Starting to get a little bit annoyed, Faye asked the boy again why he kept on pressing the button. The boy replied, This boy keeps coming up to my bed and telling me to get out because it's his bed. Noisy Spirit Murray was a security officer at a hospital in this area. He had been working here for several years now and he knew the staff in the building very well. Murray started a night shift one day and it was just like any other. He conducted his patrols and went about his normal routine. Early in the evening though, 
he received a telephone call from a very panicky nurse in one of the wards. She sounded very stressed, and when he asked her what was wrong, she asked him to come quickly because someone upstairs from where the ward was could be heard smashing windows, slamming doors and bashing things. Murray admitted that he could faintly hear some noises coming through the phone as he spoke, but as it was in the background, he couldn't quite make it out. He responded immediately and left the security office to investigate. He moved quickly and made his way into the upstairs area that the nurse had indicated to him over the phone. He looked carefully as he suspected an intruder. This was due to the description that the nurse gave of the activity. But when he was there, there was no noise. Nothing was out of place and nothing was damaged or moved. And it should be noted that this was the only area above the ward and was the only place the sounds could have been coming from. A little bit annoyed, Murray went downstairs and spoke to the nurse who had telephoned him and told her that there was nothing there. She looked at him blankly, as if she didn't believe him. She was sure of what she'd heard. She was convinced that something was going on. Murray then left and returned to the security office to log the call. About half an hour later or so, he received a second telephone call from the same nurse in the ward. This time, he could hear more clearly through the phone the noise in the background of what sounded like furniture being smashed and glass being broken. The nurse again said that it sounded as if someone was upstairs smashing windows and slamming doors. And this time, she even had a second and third nurse raise their concerns over the phone to back up her claims. Expecting to catch whoever it was in the act, Murray rushed upstairs. But again, he heard no noises while there. Nothing was moved. Nothing was damaged or broken. Scratching his head, he conducted a more thorough search this time, but found no one around. He checked every corner of the room, and even waited in a dark corner, just in case someone was playing a trick. But nothing happened. Again, a little bit annoyed, he went to the ward where the nurses were and told them that there couldn't possibly be anybody up there. And by now, a little freaked out himself, asked them not to call if it happened again. Going for a ride. Hospitals are busy places, and most of them operate on a 24-hour, 7-day-a-week basis. There are also other businesses that help keep the hospital running, such as gift shops and cafes, and their staff are not immune to the paranormal goings-on that happen there. This was the case for Price and his co-workers, who worked at a coffee shop here. Their day started early in the morning, and they had an office from which the shop was managed. One morning, as on a few occasions that would happen after this, Price had the door open to the office. The office door opened up to a main corridor that, although during the day was very busy, at 5.30am there was hardly anyone around. Something went past the open door, then Price didn't pay too much attention. He was busy stacking milk on a small trolley to take it out to the shop. Then something passed by again, He only saw it out of the corner of his eye, but he looked up this time and paid attention. He waited a little bit confused as to what he'd seen. Soon enough, it passed by the open doorway again. This time he saw it. It was a little girl riding on a small bicycle. She was riding up and down this short section of the corridor, over and over again, all without looking up at Price or making a single sound. It dawned on Price that there were no patients around at this time, let alone a bicycle for one to ride, and as he looked closer, he realised that he could almost see through the little girl. (gasps) Price slammed the office door shut and, scared, fumbled to get on the phone to call security. Security attended, but found nothing. This was not the last time this little girl was seen by the cafe staff. Subscribe if you like this video so that you can be notified when new ones are uploaded. And be sure to send us your true ghost stories. Our contact details are in the description below.